Hello, 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 everybody. My name is Orlando Echeverria, and today I'm going to be talking to you about a paper by Charles A. Kupchan. He's a German, so I'm sorry if I mispronounced the name. And it is titled, Getting Ready for a World Transformed. Um, I actually found this paper very interesting, and I hope that the information I relay right now, you guys find it interesting just like how I did. Um, so basically, I'm just going to give you a gist of what the paper is about really quick, and then I'll kind of deep dive into the subjects he was bringing and say some quotes and everything. Um, so how everything's been ever since, I guess you would say, after World War II, the West, Western ideals like Europe and mainly the United States have always been the world, have always had a hegemony over world politics and world dominance they've always been the number one at the top the kings and in modern age um basically what the author is trying to argue in this paper is that they're actually losing power in the next couple of years and um basically our economic dominance is being challenged by these up and upcoming countries like china russia india brazil and that western ideals and uh, democracy liberalism and our um, concept of capitalism are being challenged by these new ideals and um, a lot of people used to think that as we get into the world democracy and western ideals would actually be spread out but we're not actually seeing that change happening and then that's actually challenging the U.S.'s dominance and our economics <clears throat> ah. so to start off um, the author basically starts to saying that the 21st century is not a singular country's world it's no one's world a lot of countries are emerging in economic power and military power as well so there are a lot of countries right now in the mix and there's no real way of saying that this world has more power over this one or more economic dominance obviously there are the, the main countries but traditionally it's always been the US or Europe and that's changing like how I stated before so just a couple quotes to kind of get you guys going and started um, he says that according to many scholars, by 2025, the U.S. dollar will not have the global dominance that it has right now at the moment. According to Goldman Sachs, by 20, uh, <coughs> excuse me, um, by 2050, the four of the top five economics will come from developing world. So China, India, Brazil, and Russia. These are countries like the ones that I've been saying are challenging the U.S. Um, economic and global dominance. So the U.S. is losing the position that it's had ever since after world war ii or after the cold world and uh, these transitions and the distribution of global power are very dangerous for our economics and they could bring things like instability and i mean even war so i mean it's it's definitely a, a big problem so kind of like i stated before he goes on to argue that they're not really following the model that the U.S. and the European countries have had. Um, many of these countries like China and Russia, they're having their own version of state capitalism. And um, in very traditional versions like the middle classes what led to the rise of the United, to the United States. And in countries like China, it's the opposite way around. They're keeping the money at the top and they're actually building their middle class from the top down. So basically what's hurting these democracies uh, and these and our economic is basically globalization. Globalization, the world is now connected in so many different ways that our economic is only based on our policies and our foreign policies. Now with all the other players, there are external issues that we have to deal with. And basically globalization is hurting this um, and it's hurting our Western democracy in the long run. Um, two ways that globalization is actually hurting us is that many traditional policies and tools used by our liberal democracies used by our liberal aren't getting ready for a world transformed so many of the traditional policies and fiscal policies that we've had like um, in the 2008 crisis how the United States government actually bought off the banks and reestablished the economy. The world is so intertwined now that maybe a policy like that is outdated and actually wouldn't help our economy go back up. Another challenge is that many of the Western electorates are asking their governments to solve that require a level of international cooperation that is just basically unattainable. I guess the best um, example that I could show of this, uh, of this second uh, pointer is um, an issue like an issue like climate change. Um, I mean, right now, basically, all we are, the only way to 
get ahead of this problem is through a huge amount of international cooperation that is basically impossible to attain. I mean, countries need to come together and all agree on one basic uh, policy to tackle climate change. And I mean, that's basically impossible with different democracies and the different governments and economic policies that all these countries have. Another example would be the bloodshed in Syria. It would require too many different countries from too many different sites to cooperate to actually fix that. So that's also one of the problems that uh, that you could have. So, I mean, basically, he goes on to explain that the root of the problem is economic conditions. Um, in the Western worlds and in the European, the middle class uh, is basically dying out in these Western countries. And then, I'm sorry, I had to sneeze. <laughs> And inequality is actually spreading uh, between the top and the middle class. The richer are just getting richer, while the middle classes are actually making less money on average than how they used to be back in the 1950s and 1960s. So all these economic conditions, they're just getting worse for us, while countries like China and Russia and their state capitalism, they're actually making it work for them and their policies and, and, and their type of uh, uh, state-run governance that they have. <sighs> And I mean, this is direct. This is a direct issue between um, globalization and the outsourcing of jobs. I mean, basically, probably everything that I'm wearing right now, this jacket, my shoes, I could bet on it that they weren't made in the United States. And outsourcing is actually proven to be a huge problem. Not only that, many other uh, many other innovations to the workforce, like AI, computers are actually threatening a lot of the regular jobs that we have and that we're used to as a Western democracy that a lot of Americans and a lot of Europeans actually depend on, like the trucking business, manufacturing. We're losing a lot of those jobs, while countries like China and Russia, Brazil, India, they don't mind having their people working for 20 cents an hour, 80 cents an hour. So a lot of American companies and the bigger companies of the world just go over there. And this globalization is actually what's hurting us and dropping our dominance in the world market. So this is just a like just to reiterate this is just a direct consequence of globalization. There's no way that you could expect a corporation that their whole main source is basically to increase profits and get the quarter better than it was last time. They're not going to pay an American worker $12 an hour or a European 8 when they could just go to a country that doesn't have these work these these worker laws and these worker rights laws and they could just pay them 80 cents an hour and the people would actually be happy because it was worse than what they've had before. So um, this is also another point that he was getting at. A lot of these Chinese middle class are actually happy with how they're working. They, they, they don't mind that they live in a, in a in basically an authoritarian communist country. So they're actually, it's actually working. Um, towards the end of the paper, the Oxter actually provides two main ways to fix all these problems that uh that basically our western ideals and democracy and economics are facing as we trans as we move forward into the 21st century um so the first would be that western democracies have to individually and collectively embrace different strategies of economics that go well beyond business as usual um one way to do this is large-scale investments directly into our infrastructure into our into our government we we have to we have to do state funded large programs that give jobs to the american people especially those that will get lost with time so with these big investments into the world we're making americans work we're putting money into our own economy and it's something that we can control ourselves and the second is that leaders across the west should rally behind an adjust an agenda of progressive populism one intended to, ch to channel ele electoral discontent towards constructive ends and enable centrist voters to prevail against special interests and the political extremes. We need to find a way for the policies that get passed help the middle class and help us. That is the only way that we can possibly stay on top and be a world he he hegemonic power and be a strong economic because the way and the route that we're going right now it's not looking too well for us based on what this author is complaining is saying like i stated before by 2025 the u.s dollar is expected to lose its world dominance countries like china and russia are just expanding and getting and getting getting their influence in foreign countries higher and higher i mean with china expanding their rail their railroad across all of all of Eurasia, 
putting investments in foreign countries, buying land. They're just getting bigger and bigger. Their economy is just growing while ours seems to be stagnant. Our policies don't seem to be changing to fit globalization and the rise and the problems that it's in, invoking on our economics. A lot of people are scared, including this author, and there's really no way to see how much it changes. We just have to kind of go into the 21st century, but I do have faith in our American system. We've always prevailed. But the author in this paper, Charles Kochen, doesn't feel that way. He feels that the world is about to be transformed in a heavy way. Europe and the United States aren't going to be the only world powers at hand anymore. We need to be ready to live in a world where China, Russia, India, and Brazil carry just as much influence, carry just as much money, have just as much economic importance, military power as the United States and as Europe. And while our country is falling, while our country is losing jobs, while our middle class is diminishing, the top just keep on getting richer, globalization keeps on getting higher, and the will of the middle class does not is not being heard. Some big changes need to happen in our in our governance, in our foreign economic policies, if we want to be back on top, unless we're gonna be risking wars or of uh, instability in our own politics here at home, revolts, uh, populism to the right or left, which is something you never want. And we need to focus on the real things, which is how to tackle this problem that is looming over our American democracy, our liberal ideals. These countries around, they don't believe in representative democracy. They don't believe in a fair vote. They believe in having one man in power and keeping the status quo. And that is something that is threatening us incredibly and immensely. And it's basically what Charles Cubchen was arguing throughout this whole article, that we need to get ready for this new world. We need to be able to live in this world where China and Russia, you know, they carry just as much weight in military and economic might as us. Um, so that's basically the gist of this article. Um, I definitely agree with many of the points he said. I do know that the world is changing. The United States is losing power. Our president is a mockery to the rest of the world, as we have seen recently. Um... We don't have too much respect as American people. The European Union is falling apart. A lot of countries are in debt. Greece with the debt crisis. We had a own debt crisis in 2008. UK with Brexit. And these are problems that countries like China and Russia, India and Brazil aren't really dealing with. You know, they, they, have, they have their own issues like any other country. But as far as the economics, as far as their own political ideology they seem to be fine and they seem to be moving and increasing their economic output and investing more and increasing their military and basically just growing in power while our western ideals and democracies are just kind of staying more or less where they're at um charles Cupchin definitely does make a really really good point and i hope you guys read this article it was it was, it was interesting i would recommend it to anybody it's getting ready for a world transformed and trust me my peers the world is going to be transformed very soon. I just hope that we could stay at the top as an American. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this video. My name is Orlando, and you guys have a great day.